Hello, so this is just going to be a wee quick uh, video on warping. So, as I was saying last time, so this is everything we had last time. So as you can see, this is uh, the freeze of the new sand we had. I've been it and... Ah, cool. So, I'm going to go to Beats, and as you can see here, this is the transients. So this, if I hit this, it's going to go down. So what I'm doing is I'm left clicking and then I'm hitting it. I think it's, I said this in the last video, but sometimes I'm just doing things for muscle memory and remembering. It's like, I'm kinda, I might be going a wee bit fast and apologies for that. So uh, my explaining takes a wee second to catch up with uh, what I'm actually doing. So this is how much basically it's going to kind of uh, go down so it can like, almost nearly like, fall effect. Tremolator, come in, if you can hear that. So that's happening within the transients. So if I put that to 8, that shortens it. So cool, so that's one of the things you can do with beats. And I'm going to go into tones here. So that's a grain size. So I think. I say tape like, but I don't, I don't think it is really with it. But it kind of makes it sound kind of crushed there when you're pitching it. So if I start moving things, actually. So you can start to kind of hear it a wee bit kind of. Well, grainier. So, aye, so tones will make it kind of grainier. Then again, the texture we've got grain size here. I think flux is its sharp fluctuation, so it's kind of like how it gives it that kind of a detune kind of chorusy type sound that you hear in a lot of kind of. Uh, kind of lo-fi stuff that's like might be easier to hear if I patch it up a wee bit so yeah, that's a lot clearer and it kind of wobbles it I think that's the kind of I think that's what I'm trying to say it kind of gives it that kind of like wobbly kind of wordly kind of wordliness like without actually properly tremolating it like a road uh, aye, so that's kind of what that does. So the next one here, repitch. I like using this. So we're talking about tape. So obviously, if you speed up or slow down tape, it either becomes higher pitched when it's going up the way, when it's getting faster, and if it's getting slower, it becomes lower pitched. So that's what this does. So if I change the BPM here and I take away the annoying click track, you can hear it getting lower. up or a kind of trap thing if I was to do that then put it at half time maybe so I so back to 95 we can repitch that so complex complex mode is what I use a lot of the time so if we were to pitch this up so it pitches up and it still kind of resembles what this would sound like if it's pitched up but you can hear wee bits of it kind of sound See here when the longer notes. Cool. So that can kind of happen with like tuning and stuff sometimes. So if I go into uh, Complex Pro and these are your formats, so this is what's going to make it sound more kind of like what it would sound like if you're playing it pitched up. And your envelope is it's like the kind of filter on it. So I put that right down. So this is kind of more what it sounds like. And it does sound a wee bit out of tune when it's pitched up. But so if I was thinking about it with vocals, the way I like to think about it is see when it's all the way up, 
if I was doing vocal chops, that would make it sound more like kind of 2012 Skrillex. So it'd be high pitched, but you would still hear the kind of syllabins, I think is the, the word that I'm looking for. And then if you put it right down, it's, it would sound more like uh, Lars Miller. And the way he does his stuff, that it's all kind of not cartoony sounding, but that kind of. It sounds less. As much as, much as like uh, vocal drops and that don't really sound like vocals, it sounds less like vocals, and it's cool. So if you're ever doing anything with that, I'd recommend see if you're distorting something and you're trying to make like you're trying to turn vocals into a flute or something. If you were doing that, just like it was another Tuesday kind of thing, obviously, uh, for that kind of like Jack Hughes Skrillex type thing, but it was a distorted vocals. Uh, it was a. Uh, it sounded like a flute, but I think it was a. Uh, it was Justin Bieber's voice in that way, are you now, sir? But it was like bounced off so many times through Ableton. That's another thing I'm going to go into. You can just absolutely destroy sounds in this. And it's great. I love it. It's a load of fun. So, aye. So that's kind of basically covers the actual warp mode. And to do with warping, as you can see here, uh, much in the same way that when you had MIDI, you can drag this up and you can go into kind of look and see what you're actually dealing with. So, as you can see, this doesn't start right away. At least on the waveform. Uh, I'm also going to put that back, I really like that picture. I prefer this synth kind of lower, although it can sound really nice when you when you pitch it up and put it through some kind of like tape saturation and different things. All the fun stuff. So, Right in here, because I can just leave it at zero, it's no pitched anyway, so it doesn't really matter as much with this kind of sound. So, if I wanted to kind of start warping this and moving things about, what I could do is, if I start to drag that out, so this is a warp marker that's already there, if I double click that, it's going to go away, and you'll see how everything down the bottom right just kind of came back. So, if I hang with that, that's basically going to everything within that section that was away over there is now going to be faster because it's unwarped. So this is warped to 180 BPM now because it's basically trying to double tune that. It's cool. So if I hit that again I can bring it back to it. So you can see down there it goes a lot faster. So, say that was, say this was all out of time already, so cool, I think that's enough out of time, I might have actually made that a bit too out of time, but it's fine. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit warp from here straight on the first one. So that's going to be... warping this straight from here and I'm going to bring the clip track in. So you can see here that goes out. So if I double click here and bring a warp marker in, I can then drag this along. And it's the same uh, with when you're, see when you were using your MIDI and you right click and you can change the size of the grid. So I'm going to put it to kind of eight. So if I do that. So if I bring this over and then double click, cool. So that will do. That sounds kind of alright. So that's how you kind of start to warp things, but you can just start stretching them into these weird kind of like sounds. grain size right down, it will apparently do that. So watch what you're doing when you're mucking about with things, especially if you're using monitors. If you're using headphones, put the volume down, don't deafen yourself. Uh, but I, so that's what I mean by just mucking about and trying to get sound. That could be used, but 
that sound. I'm not going to make that sound again because I don't particularly particularly like it. Uh, get off that loud. But you can just start mucking about and making sound. And I think I've probably said this in every video I've done. Because uh, it is. That's what I'm trying to get happening here. Just getting you to start making sounds, making noise, make mistakes. Muck about. Just like, start to find things that you enjoy either the sound of or you enjoy making. And like you will start to find things. You don't need to just make exclusively electronic stuff in Ableton. You can record them like through bands and stuff. We've uh, actually done that down the place a couple of times. If you were at any of them, you'll have seen me, Tosh and Neil and Andy was there. One of them I think as well. There was a couple of people. Uh, so I, I think that's basically everything covered in this. And I'll see you in the next one.